And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono green stompy in historic. That's right. So we're getting our best of one day Monday kicked off here. We, we're going to be playing two historic decks and two standard decks. Um, you can see over here the H are for our historic decks and then the standard decks. We're just going to play them in ranked. It's just easy to play them in ranked. So we're going to be doing seven games. That's what we like doing with our best of one decks. And this one's courtesy of uh, Storm in chat, where we're going to be doing uh, just mono green Stompy. Nothing too, uh, nothing too flashy here. We're just going to be trying to play turn one mana creature. We got three Gilded Goose. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be four or not. We'll we'll kind of see how this goes. But three Goose and four Land War Elf, and of course the four Once Upon a Time, because we always want to have one of these uh, turn one creatures. Because we want to go turn one mana creature, turn two three drop. That's just that's just the curve that we always want to have um, is is that right there. And then, of course, our three drops. We got some big ones. We got Lovestruck Beast. We got Steel Leaf Champion. We got Yorvo, Lord of Garen Brig. So three huge three drops. And the reason why playing very large creatures is good, not only does it do a lot of damage, but it also helps get to our, our really big spells faster. Of course, the Great Henge, um, we need... Uh, we need a large creature because it costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So if we have a three mana, five power creature like Lovestruck Beast or Steel Leaf Champion, those, this would reduce the cost by five, so it costs four mana. So then the next turn, so turn three, we could have four mana and we can drop the Great Henge. Uh, we also, of course, have Galta. Um, the more large creatures you have in play, the cheaper Galta is as well. Um, so yeah, so we so that's that's kind of like the goal of our deck. We got Questing Beast because that card's really powerful. Some Vivians to give our large creatures trample, also be a tad bit of removal. Return of the Wild Speaker. Um, this is a pretty interesting one. Though it looks like we're trying out. We could either draw a lot of cards, um, or you know, be a pump spell. So there's just one Return of the Wild Speaker. We'll see if it's better than like the fourth Vivian. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting one to try out here. Um, yeah, there, there's only just the three questing beasts. There is the fourth questing beast is in the sideboard for Vivian, um, but yeah, this maybe this return should be the fourth questing beast. But you know, we'll kind of see. That card's just so good. Then, then we do have a, a small smattering of two drops. Um, Storm had four Barkhide Troll, but I'm not I'm not in love with Barkhide Troll. It's fine. Um, so instead of just playing four of this card, because it's not like I want to play like you know I, I don't really want to have like two of them. It's not like something I really want to draw that much in the late game. Um, but it is good to have two mana creatures because of the Great Henge, of course. Instead of playing four of these, we're playing one Kral Harpooner because there's a lot of other people playing Gilded Goose and Oko and stuff like that. So we have one Kral Harpooner and, of course, one Fauna Shaman. I want to play this card. Fauna Shaman is awesome. We can, like, if we, if, um, if we, you know, if we're kind of, like, stuck with cards in hand and we're we're uh, not going to be able to play Galta at all, we can discard Galta and go find something that we can play. Um, otherwise, we could, you know, disc. If like later on we don't need Bark Hide Troll really, we can discard Bark Hide Troll and go find you know go find Questing Beast, you know go fa find the Kral Harpooner we need, um, you know things like that. It's just a just a good card, um, yeah. It's just a really good solid card. So we got one Fauna Shaman in here. Should maybe have more Fauna Shamans, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Um. I'm sure that, that the troll is there to turn on Lovestruck Beast in a pinch. This turns on Lovestruck Beast in a pinch? I don't think it does. No, yeah, it doesn't. Um, anyway, so yeah, so the fourth questing beast is in the sideboard for Vivian to grab. Because, you know, we are a best of one deck, but we have the Vivian minus five can grab um, a bunch of creatures. So yeah, so that that's where the fourth beast is. Um, you know, Loving Shaman, if you want to shuffle away a lot of cards in the graveyard for, like, Kethis combo. Um, uh, another Harpooner over here, Rex Age and Brontodon. Um, we got a Ripjaw Raptor for the, for the aggro matchup. If we need, like, a, a big blocker for aggro. Um, Ceratops, Vine Mare, Aggressive Mammoth. Just, just, you know, a bunch of, uh, stuff. We got the fourth Galta over here also. Um, if Galta would be a really good card to grab. So a bunch of good creatures over there as well. Okay, so this should be fun. So we're going to just play some best of one. We'll play seven games. So we have to do, for best of one historic, we do this play mode. Mm. 
No, yeah, I don't really like Sir Farron either. I think the other card besides the trolls that, that I think that we should probably be playing, the card that we should probably be playing is Thorn Lieutenant. Thorn Lieutenant doesn't have three power. You know, it's a two, three right away, but it's just a really good quality card. Like Thorn, I'm thinking Thorn Lieutenant's better than Bark Hide Troll, but he had trolls, so we could go, we'll go with them. No, so this is best of one, so so we don't have sideboard veils because it's best of one. So our sideboard is just for minus five Vivian. Um, yeah, there's no. We're gonna mulligan this. Yeah, like there's nothing but like the turn. You know, maybe you start playing stuff on turn three. We really want a mana creature, huh? Well, I kind of feel like just keeping quad Steel Leaf Champion because that's kind of fun. Even though I should probably... I mean, do we just go to five? Like, how often do you get four of a kind in an opening hand? Like, that doesn't happen, like, hardly ever, right? Um, but I guess we have to put one back. All right, so if this was the seven-card hand, again, I would mulligan, just like we mulliganed the first seven-card hand, because I think we really need a, a one-mana accelerant. But that was our six-card hand, and I didn't really want to go to five. But I, I would have mulliganed this as a seven again. I, I kind of feel like maybe our deck should just have four Gilded Goose. <laughs> yeah, not keeping Quad Steely Champion. We will prevail. Harness the elements. Nice, Matthew. Yeah, that would have been, you know, we were on the draw. That would have been the perfect time to draw a Once Upon a Time or a Llanowar Elf or something. Yeah, must must be nice to have Llanowar Elves in your hand. I should have mold should have molded to five. On the draw, not doing anything until turn three is too slow and other people are gonna turn three Nissa. I mean, I don't think I don't think Nissa's really necessarily a weakness to our deck. It's it's a weakness when we have a, a re really bad hand. Like like that hand is is really as bad as our hands are gonna be. Not doing anything until turn three. We're we're not keeping any hand that's worse than that one that we just had. Nice, they got lots of mana over there. Next turn I can drop the Great Henge and Galta. Because, you know, Great Henge can just play the Galta. So they have infinite mana. 
But if they just have all elves, it doesn't really matter. It's do they have like a finale or something important. Um, the Oh, and they tap the Incubation Druid? I guess they didn't have the mana to, to adapt to the Incubation Druid anymore. <laughs> Dino Mama. Yeah, this this is what our deck's supposed to be doing. Ah, uh, they they messed up their auto tap. But yeah, like they need to just go to they need to just go to blockers and then activate that thing twice, which they could have because of the incubation druid. If they would tap it correctly. But they were going to die because of my Vivian. There we go. Lifer. Resub in there for 12 months. Thank you so much there, Lifer. All right. We have... We're one and one. And we're, we've are we had Land War Elf one game. Not Land War Elf the other game. Yay, Land War Elf. Eep. Alright, so we already got Land of Werewolf right now. Let's grab the Steel Leaf. So we can have turn 2 Steel Leaf, turn 3 Steel Leaf, turn 4 Galta. Um, that is our fourth sub of the day. I didn't update this. Like I'm blocking that. What are you gonna do? You do three damage to my Steel Leaf Champion. Ooh. I guess we lead with Yorvo, actually. Because Yorvo is just a 5 5 right now and it just gets bigger. I was enjoying Historic, and then I ran into a Nexus of Eight deck. And now I'll never play Historic again. Man. You don't, you don't have to never play Historic again, Ross. Historic, if you're enjoying it, play it. It's okay if you, you play against a, one deck you don't like every now and again. Do I even need to block this? I mean, it's... I have I have 13 damage coming back at him. Yeah, you could just scoop to Nexus and if that's something that, that really bothers you and have fun with all the other decks. Oh, the bug, a bug here was showing just wasn't showing one and one. Does it show two and one now? There we go. All right, we've had land war off twice. We're two and one. Mono green stompe. Some good magic here. Don't have to. You know, don't have to worry about too much. Don't have to worry about sideboards or anything. Just kind of throw down some cards, see what happens. All right, come on, Land War Elf. 
That's our roulette game. Ugh, no land where elf. Hmm. So do we mulligan? I guess we're supposed to keep on the draw. We have the singular land war elf. The thing is, yeah, Goose only adds the mana the one time. Goose is like Lotus Petal Elf. Take that, Teferi. <laughs> Don't you think Fayborough Elder is an underrated card? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it can ramp very, very fast. That is true. Trust me, um, I have a plan. And can be a bigger creature. Yeah, so yeah, I'll say it's an underrated card. Because playing the Vivian means that we wouldn't have another Nature threat to get what rightfully belongs to it. If they have, you know, if they have a, a sweeper this next turn. I'd get out of the way if I were you. They could, of course, have settle. Then I get more basics. So that's not so bad either. We didn't get our questing bee settled, so that's good. This might be a bad idea. You're a bad idea. Yeah, resolving Vivian is really nice here. I mean, we could minus and go grab Carnage Tyrant, for example, but. Um, I don't want. I won't hide from the world. Uh, Any well, you need to slow down. I guess we're just doing this. I say I don't. I don't want to just minus five. Nub. Or, I, don't know, I guess that's how we say it. Uh, Nub J. Um, but you're back for five months. Thank you so much for the resub. I should probably figure out how to pronounce your name there. But I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I didn't want to. I Like, against the blue white control deck, I don't want to. I just didn't want to play Questing Beast and Steel Leaf Champion together. Just wanted to play one of them. But yeah, I could have castled and played them both. But against the sweepers, I don't want to nub ye. All right, there we go, nub ye. Here goes nothing. Ah, it's Dutch. Cool, cool. All right, as Kant has been searching, they only need one more card in the graveyard. If they would have, if they would have used their Fable Passage, they could have flipped as Kanta. But didn't do that, so that's good for me. At least get another turn of them not having as Kanta. I, I imagine this is just a loss from here. I forgot how good this card was. No, my Vivian. Hey. 
<laughs> no, you cannot decline Field of Ruin. It's each opponent searches their library. Or each player, sorry, each player searches their library. It's not a you may search their library. It's each player searches their library. That's just something that happens. Yeah, I guess I'm just scared of yeah, or no, we couldn't play the Galt of the last turn, but I'm I'm scared of sweepers. You know, I don't I don't want to have like I don't want to like throw out everything to sweepers, but I guess like with Galta, like there's there's no way to keep Galta. Basically, there's no way to play Galta play around sweepers with Galta. There's no way to play around sweepers with Galta. That's the way to say that. This isn't a fight you can win. Nope, it's not. I'm moving on. As Kanta with Teferi untapping it, them being at 16 life, we're not doing 16 damage. So we're just going to move on. Hey, QQ. Ooh, like it. Land War Elf on turn one. So, so far, we're two and two. We've played Land War Elf twice. And the other two games, we did not play Land War Elf. Whoops. I could have got Fauna Shaman in play and then just do this, uh, you know, make a 1-1. One, one. Thought about that. Yeah, this probably might going to get big. Need to go grab a Galta. Boo. That's a good Crowl Harpooner. Oh, this thing doesn't have flying yet. No. <laughs> oh, that thing doesn't have flying yet. That thing has flying. Yeah, just it's been a while since I played against Air Ascendant. My bad. No, we're gonna lose, and we had we had Land War Elf. Thank you so much, there, Tomato. Tomato Activator, our sixth sub of the day. At least we unloaded our hand before the Soul Warden. Oh, come on. Resplendent Angel, too. All right. It's obviously just going to be infinite creatures. 
not infinite, but be a whole bunch of angels. So I need to hold on to that harpooner. Barkai Troll still looks pretty useless. We gotta play two mana cards. But maybe that should just be like, you know, maybe that should just be two Harpooners and two. Um, Fauna Shamans. Um. Yeah, for the how long I've been playing Magic, I'd, I'd just say World Wake, even though I played Magic before that, but that's how long I've been playing. Um, seriously. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not playing Sweepers. I mean, kind of say the same thing about our deck, too. All right, find Lanowar Elf. No, no Elf. Okay, so we're going to... We're playing against Rakdos. I'm going to grab Yorvo. I already have a two-mana card to play. I don't really need the, the Barkai Troll. Mardu. Well, Land and if you were just a turn too late. Yeah, this looks like a this would this does look like a matchup where we'd love having the Great Henge. Kinda wish we had more the Great Henges. Like are we just gonna get sweepered here? Hopefully not. Sure feels like it though. But if they don't have it, they're probably going to be dead. Darn. All right, they got another one. Castles look nice. I'm pretty good. Darn. I'm not... I guess, yeah, I guess they wanted to block with Kenrith. Yeah, Phyrexian Arena looks awesome with Fires of Invention and Kenrith. We begin. Your end has arrived. Is it just me, or is it getting a little warm in here?
And this is just me dying. Faster than they will. Phyrexian Arena with Kenrith gaining a whole bunch of life. And of course fires. This opponent's deck's pretty sweet. Hope it's not too hot for you. Might demands power. I need to make it a, a deck like this for next time we're playing historic. Alright, that's just lethal. We need more Great Henge. I don't know, we got two of those. We also have the Return of Return of the Wild Speaker. They can draw a bunch of cards. Correct, Ross. Yep. Yeah, if you just go into the play mode with a historic deck, it'll match you against another historic deck. <laughs> I don't know, Storm. Yeah. I never... You always have, like, cool-looking decks, then I never do well with them. Ugh, that is... That's not good. Alright, so we'll go, you know, Questing Beast on three, Galta on four. That's the plan. That card's so bad. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if it counts towards daily rewards or not. I, I don't know. Yeah, these two cards are legit. Yeah, sell their creature decks. We need Vivian. Yeah, I mean, sure, their deck may die to a sweeper, but it's not like everybody just plays sweepers. It's not like there's just a huge abundance abundance of sweepers running around. Trade this for the 9-9 Pride Mate. It's pretty sad, but that's the trade we need to do. So Fauna Shaman's great because we can just go go find more Galtas. If we just draw any creature, we turn it into a Galta.
Uh, that's a bad block. They can just gain a life with this. That thing's a 10 10. I could trade my beast, my troll, and my shaman. I kind of wish we had like a voracious, voracious hydra in here. Pride mate's already at 12 12. We have to chump with Galta. Now it's going to be a 13. Shaman sweep. Because I, I have to keep their life total down so this thing doesn't turn into a 6 6 flyer. Which is difficult. Yeah, yeah, Soul Ward is so much better than Orator. Yeah, it's so much better. Hey, what's up, Alder 2? <laughs> this is why best of one is nonsense. That is true. Some, sometimes it's good to play nonsense. You don't really have to have a reason. You don't need to put the sense into nonsense. No, Murderous Rider doesn't... No, Murderous Rider is whenever Murderous Rider dies, it goes to your bottom. So, no, Fauna Shaman doesn't really work with Murderous Rider. But, yeah, Cauldron of Eternity is very good with, with Fauna Shaman. Um, you can loop... There's there's that, like, Golgari Knight that whenever you gain life, you put the creature back from your graveyard to your hand. So, if you could have, like, a any kind of lifelink thing, any kind of life gain thing, you know, even the Great Henge... You just keep putting that back into your hand, keep discarding it to Fauna Shaman. Um, if you have something like, uh, you want you want cards that are good in your graveyard. You know, like you could be discarding, you know, Arc Light Phoenix to go find more Arc Light Phoenixes. Um, you can you can have uh, you can discard the cat. It's like maybe you know making a deck like a, a Golgari version with this and and Cauldron Familiar, and 
you know, because you can discard Cauldron Familiar, bring it back with a food. Um, you can have the Deathless Knight in that thing to go get more Cauldron Familiars and stuff like that. Um, you can also have... Uh, it's not Gravecrawler. What, whatever the, the black creature that whenever... You, the one, the, you know, the black one drop that they lose life, you put it back into your hand for two mana. Like, that's an awesome card to discard. Um, Blood Operative. That's, an, that's a good one. You can discard Blood Operative and then Surveil and put it back into your hand. Yeah, no joke. We need a Masker Girl. I don't think Masker Girl would even kill Johnny's Pride, mate. Gutter Bones. Yeah, that thing. Gutter Bones is amazing with Vana Shaman. There's, there's definitely some really cool things to do with Fauna Shaman. Our best draw is like Return of the Wild Speaker that, that draws us 12. Um, but yeah, we need to find Vivian, obviously. Um, are there are there any good creatures to grab? Yorvo? Is it better just to have this thing and start making foods? Let's just make food. Oh, I know, yeah, we need a walking ballista. That'd be good. Does kind of feel like maybe our deck shouldn't just be mono green. We need we need some more interaction. Yeah, it's, it is kind of crazy. We've seen zero of our card draw spells between, or you know, basically zero of our non-creature spells. No Vivians, no Great Henges, no Return of the Wild Speaker. I guess that's only six cards though. And we need to kill these Soul Wardens. I mean, I guess if we kill a Johnny's Primate, we can attack with Galta then. I guess they have these lean and vanguards and stuff too. Once if they get to forty life, we lose. Yeah, Vivian kills Pride Mate. Vivian has the Questing Beast deal damage to the Pride Mate.
Dang, that's probably game. Do they have to get to 40 or 30? They just have to get to 30 life? <clears throat> yeah, it's game. So they, Cause they just attack with those things and they, you know, they gain life because of Linden. Those things are 6-6 six, six flying lifelinkers. So I guess they could have attacked the turn before too. I was thinking it was 40 life. It's only 30 life. That's right. That makes sense because you start at 20. It's 10 more life. Okay, so. See, so yeah, I didn't have the best luck there. Couldn't find any of our game breaking cards through millions of turns with Vivian's return or even the Great Henge to draw us a lot more cards. But yeah, there's, so there's Mono Green Stompy. Does kind of feel like we we could use another color. Um, we just didn't have interaction, and even against control, we you know just weren't really drawn like these things to get us to have a late game. It's basically if the games that we won where we you know we played turn two, three drop, and then another big creature, and they couldn't kill those big creatures, and the big creatures killed them. If that plan didn't work whatsoever, if my opponent could handle that plan, we just lost on the spot. We didn't have a backup plan. Well, we have a backup plan with the Great Henge, Vivian, and Return of the Wild Speaker. We never drew a backup plan. I guess that's what I should say. Barkhide Troll is pretty useless. To be expected. Um, Faunashawn was awesome. We could just, you know, kind of diversify some more cards here to get some more things for Faunashawn to hit. Like Voracious Hydra could be a good one. You know, probably just playing Voracious Hydras instead of these Bark Hydra trolls. Because like if yeah, uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, I I agree with you. I think yeah, that's actually that's a good that's a good one. Yeah. Vivian, yeah, why aren't, we, why aren't we playing Vivian Reads? Yeah, this card's awesome. Yeah, because then, like, board stalls like that, you know, you can play Vivian, you can tick up, try to get to that minus eight. Yeah, we could be playing Wicked Wolves. I didn't love the, the Lovestruck Beasts. So maybe instead of, like, these Bark High Trolls, Lovestruck Beasts... And this wild speaker, we get like two of these things in another goose, and then some wolves. That could work. I could do some work. So I don't know. Those are those are def definitely some different options there. All right, but that's a uh, mono green stumpy. Um, if you're so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there and leave some comments in the chats. If you're playing some mono green stumpy yourself or just you know decks like this at all in historic, um, feel free to post your list there. Let me know what's really working for you. Um, you know, are you having success with cards like Fauna Shaman or, or anything else like that? Um, but there we go. That's Mono Green Stompy. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.